Catherine O'Connell here. This episode of Senegal in a Word is about peanuts. The peanut was introduced into Africa, more specifically West Africa, by the Portuguese in the 16th century. The cultivation of peanuts for export began in the Gambia in the 1830s and spread to Senegal and Portuguese Guinea in the 1840s. Before the development of the peanut industry in West Africa, Europeans were chiefly concerned with the trade of slaves, gold, and peanuts, which generally came from considerable distances from the interior of Africa. The end of the slave trade brought in the development of legitimate trade. Thus began the trade of not only peanuts, but also timber, rubber, and coffee. After lobbying African farmers to switch from the millet crop to harvesting peanuts, larger numbers of peanuts started to be exported into France. Impressed with the economic potential of the peanut, the Minister of Agriculture and Commerce in 1840 ordered a substantial reduction in the taxes levied on West African produce imported on French vessels. However, deshelled peanuts and processed peanut oil did not receive the same slashed duties, crippling West African processors. Senegal lost the opportunity to develop a home-based profitable industry while the French were booming with bulk shipments of peanuts. Additionally, a heavy surcharge was placed upon West African produce brought it to France on foreign vessels. All of these factors put together virtually assured the French's monopoly on West African produce, specifically peanuts. At the same time that peanuts were gaining such popularity, so was palm oil. Therefore, the popularity of these two principal commodities had important consequences for the region. Peanuts are grown in dry savanna regions, while the trees that palm oil is tapped from grow in rainy, wet areas. The exploitation of these two principal commodities serve to confirm and strengthen previous French and British commercial and settlement patterns in the decades preceding the scramble for Africa. Therefore, this commercial hegemony would be transformed into colonial hegemony in the following decades. Peanut cultivation sparked massive seasonal migration from eastern Senegal and Mali. Before Dakar became the capital of Senegal, the capital was actually Saint-Louis. Dakar only became the capital of Senegal in 1924 as it was modernized and converted into the main exporting port of Senegal. This was to accommodate European post-war recovery demands. During the colonial period as well, railways were constructed throughout Senegal for fast connections from Niger and Mali to Dakar. Also along these routes, peanut cultivation was encouraged. This socio-political transformation was accompanied by the progressive deterioration of the living conditions of the majority of West African rural villages due to their increased food dependency. Lands previously devoted to food crops were replaced by cash crops such as peanuts and palm oil as the requirements of external trade assumed increasing importance in the region's local economies. This unequal trade structure led to the economic dependence of these regions and reinforced the political domination of imperial powers. By the 1930s, much of the Senegalese economy was devoted to peanuts. Peanuts can be roasted, they can be boiled, they can be charred, they can be pounded into powder, they can be turned into peanut butter, they can be turned into other kinds of sauces, they can be turned into oil, or they can just be eaten as themselves. There's even a region of Senegal referred to as the peanut basin. I myself do not live within the peanut basin. However, one of the main crops that my family harvests is peanuts. I think I have peanuts at least in two meals every day in some form, if not all three. About 50% of all of Senegal's land is devoted to agriculture alone, and that includes other crops such as millet, corn, and sorghum. However, a large part of that agricultural land is devoted strictly to peanuts. That's all I got for you guys today. Hope you enjoyed watching. Thanks.